So you're probably wondering what on earth this thing is. And if you read up here, it says it's an RC, <laughs> uh, radio controlled car. This is the chassis for uh, you know, a pretty advanced radio controlled car. And it's sitting on an alignment rack. So we're looking at a rendering at the moment, but I'll go back to the top level assembly and explain. Um, this is a pretty rich, feature rich model. It shows off a lot of really, really cool things uh, inside Onshape. So I probably won't be able to cover uh, a fraction of it. I've been you know, fiddling with this for, for a while now. It's a bit of a labor of love. Um, just to give you a little example, and here, you know, I can show you that the, dif the differentials are fully featured, all the gears are cut properly, uh, you know, they, um, the, the mechanisms for the suspension as well as the drivetrain all work um, as they should. Uh, it's a four-wheel drive, so there's, there's quite a lot going on in terms of the uh, mechanisms um, back here and the suspension and so on and so forth. So the suspension was really where uh, I was really wanting to to focus a lot of work um, and not the least bit um, to 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 focus on the uh, this alignment rack. Now this is a interesting piece of measurement device which bolts onto the spindles, the wheel spindles. Uh, there's a very nice bearing here and there's a couple of bearing, there's a bearing there and a bearing there which means it stays nice and tangent flat to this face, um, there's a, uh, the floor. Um, this will pivot around a very nice sharp edge here and long story short this angle which is the camber angle of the wheel will be measured um, and so it's nearly like two degrees at the moment of camber. Um, I, I particularly like this one because it's an analog version of a gauge in a digital environment. So it's D to A, I guess, digital to analog conversion. Uh, anyway, it, it works, right? So I can I can change things, and we will we'll, we will change things. Um, I'll turn the perspective off so that we can get a better view of lined things lined up at the front. Right. So look at the camber. It is just over two degrees, or around two degrees. Uh, you know, of course, there are other ways I can measure camber, um, but they're not so steampunk or fun. Um, but of course, I would have measured them in the normal uh, measurement way as well. But anyway, this is the fun way. And the other thing with this model is it's highly configured. Uh, if in fact, if you see, I've got a bunch of configurations, not just the front shock upper position. So this is where the shock um, fits into the chassis. Uh, you can see here there's a number of the seven holes here. So I can choose a different position. Uh, maybe I'll choose position one. What it's going to do is reevaluate, you know, the entire, uh, you know, solve all the mates in this assembly, um, and reassemble the uh, the thing as it needed to be. Uh, and this goes on and on. So the lower position as well. You know, I've got three positions there, um, one, two, and three. But let me show you that there's a whole lot more configurations. <laughs> uh, so. It's kind of over the top, and this was intended to be uh, a test. And basically what I was doing is I saw this PDF here. And the PDF is for um, this particular radio control competition car. And you know, on this particular circuit, on this particular date, this is a while ago, um, generally the, the top riders, drivers will sketch in all of the configuration that they, or the setup that they used on suspension block positions, um, thicknesses of the spaces and shims and so on and so on and so on. And there's tons and tons of configurations. So what I wanted to do here was replicate all of that in terms of configurations. Um, I think that is what you're looking at here. So this component up the top here, and if I bring it around, this is a tie rod. Uh, which is adjustable. There's a thread on this which threads into these uh, ball end kind of sockets. Uh, this tie rod controls the camber. Uh, if I shorten it, the camber will increase quite a lot. Um, and this is being driven by this configuration variable. So if I change this to say 47, um, again you see it's going to regenerate, it's going to rebuild this model and 
Now, if I go back to the front view, you'll see that the camber is now one, two, three, four, five and a half or a bit degrees. Um, so, you know, referring to my sheet, I can go and see that I wanted six degrees camber. So, you know, I'm really being able to uh, to mock up uh, and really adjust and, and play with these settings. Um, the other thing I can do is change the ride height. If I drop it all the way to the floor, uh, that's like putting your fingers on top of this car and pressing it all the way down to the floor. So let's do that. If I change that ride to zero, um, there we go. So now we've we've compressed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on uh, on in here, and in fact, there's some other measurements that we've we've. Um, that we might want to make with toe angle and all sorts of things in there. So that's, you know, that's a pretty fun uh, model to play with uh, in terms of configurations and just how the suspension works. Um, there's a lot to, to pull <laughs> to pull from in here. Even you know a simple component like this. You know, there's beauty on the inside of this. Um, you know, it's fully uh, it's fully defined. You know, with all of its uh, all of its parts, uh, including the rubber membrane here, um, the spring. The spring is fully configured. You know, we can. It's coming from a separate document, so we can update the configuration for different numbers of uh, turns of spring, and you know, therefore stiffness. And, and you know, that, that's all good. Um, I'll show you something with the mechanisms here. So this is just pulling out a couple of parts, showing the. The bevel gears here, and the dog bone. This is the red thing. is called the dog bone. It operates like a universal joint. Uh, it's a really fun joint to set up. Um, on this end here, it's a traditional crossed, uh, crossed universal. So there's a, uh, uh, so you get the full um, universal action there. This one's a little bit more interesting because the pin here is fixed to the dog bone um, but as it turns around it's, it's allowed to slide as well as rotate and in fact rather than just talk about it why don't I animate it um, if I animate this uh, give it plenty of steps I think this one needs plenty of steps if I just go in a loop and so I'm inputting this here I'm going in the anti-clockwise direction and you see there's a little bit of aliasing uh, with the graphics uh, sometimes depending on how you look it, it seems to be jumping or going backwards I think it's pretty good now so you know I, this is great to watch um, I just like how the gears mesh um, a lot of gear to, you know the the rack and the, the gear relations and, and other relations are all set up uh, between here uh, but the one to really watch is, is, is this one here. You see how the, as this turns, it has to uh, slide in this slot. Uh, so that's a pin slot. And it just it's, it's actually ends up being a single mate definition for this whole thing, which is a pin slot connection um, and, a, uh, and a revolute in one other thing. That's why it's called a no problem, mate, because this sort of really advanced thing um, is no problem. And what I wanted to do was change the position of this just to show you that, you know, this is set back and, and set down and to a certain distance. So if I bring it forward a little bit, I can change the, the position of this just through this mate connector. Um, it See, it's going back negative 10 so if I go negative 5 uh, it'll just bring it back this way a little bit and now I can it, it's gone minus 15 that way and then we need to go out a little bit um, I think we need to go out to say 55 millimeters all right so by changing the position there it's actually you know no problem again we can we can animate this just as we did before uh, maybe make it a bit faster yeah you can see some real and aliasing it seems to be going backwards it's just the, the frame rate the refresh rate of 
the screen and the monitor and capturing software. But anyway, that's uh, that's how robust the the gears are to uh, and these mates are to uh, to changing the. Um, it's a fascinating watch. I think this one. <laughs> anyway. Um, just giving you a little bit of a taste of what's going on in this model. Uh, you know, it's um, could dig into the steering, the the steering rack here. Uh, there's a lot going on there as well as uh, as getting the four-wheel drive mechanism to work. But um, yeah, a lot of fun.